Welcome back to our life, beginnings and always. Late shift. After lunch, she ran into Baxter. Oh God, who was more than happy for an impromptu hangout in your neighborhood. He idly spoke about the first time he brought he bought a shirt online. Apparently, the website hadn't been in English, so he had made do with automatic online translations. His unique fashion sense was eclectic in more than one way. Finding out how he filled out his wardrobe answered so many questions about his look. He smiled in fond remembrance. I measured myself multiple times to make sure I could order the correct size. It wasn't as if I'd be able to ship it back if there were problems. But, to make a long story short, it arrived in one piece. Multiple months later, at that point, I wasn't going to complain. It was a physical object in my hands. He gestured with his arm for emphasis as he did. Baxter glanced at his wrist at a watch that wasn't there. <clears throat> anyway, I hope I'm not taking too much of your time with this. You were currently taking it easy for a bit before you had to get ready for work. You had an unusual closing shift at your job today. Actually, I do have to get going soon. I have a closing shift at work. Normally, I don't close today. I don't know if someone's out or what. It is what it is. Cove's already working. He's a server at the tropical place. I think he found a good option for himself, especially with how limited jobs are in this town. He can usually take later shifts, so he has mornings free. So both of us are pretty much booked for this evening once I get to work. Baxter nodded understandingly. He was more interested than you had expected him to be. Mm -hmm. What do you do? I work at the public library. I work at the tropical place restaurant. Tropical place restaurant. I work at the public library. He grinned as if you had just said you had an exciting career as a movie star. Interesting. Well. Now that I know where and when you work, does that mean I should avoid visiting the place at that time? Or should I conveniently happen to bump into you during your shift? You felt a little awkward at his question. At least he was asking before just appearing at your job. matter to me you show up if you want I'd absolutely love having a distraction during my shift I'm gonna be pretty busy working you gave him a soft but truthful no you did not think that you would have enough time to do more than say hi even if he did go through the trouble of seeing you message received he shot you a thumbs up and you let out a sigh of relief. There would be no uncomfortable encounters today. Thank you. I've got to go ready now. Go get ready now. Good luck, Jamie. He waved at you as you peeled off toward your house. You reached your front door and gave Baxter one final nod before you went inside. You finished preparing early. You prepared on time. You were late and rushing to keep up. You were late, but still relaxed. You finished repairing early. It didn't take you long to change into your uniform. You made sure your hair was clean and gave your professional looking self a thumbs up in the mirror. You casually went back outside, ready. You felt satisfied at the time. If things went to plan, you would be at work with no time to spare, just as you liked. You made your way to work, walking down familiar streets. It didn't take long to get there, even on foot. You arrived at the building and went in at leisurely pace. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary that day.
before you fully settled into your shift, you sent a quick text to Cove that you made it to work. All right. Your phone buzzed with his response before you'd finished stowing it away in your pocket. Cove sent back a positive, you can do it, message that made you smile. The first thing you had to deal with was putting away some books that someone had left on a study table. Most of them were about bugs, so you took them to the science section. You wondered what the person had been researching as you looked at the table titles. You slid each book back into its place. Maybe it was a science project on the insects. You checked at the last book and smiled. You suddenly had a pretty good idea what the life cycle of lightning bugs is safely put back into place. You went on to your next class. Most of working at the library was like that. You put things away, organized, unpacked new arrivals, tried to keep the place neat. Sometimes you answer people's questions. You did whatever you were told, really. You were really happy with your job. You didn't think your job was bad. You were only working there because you couldn't find something better. You could barely stand working there. You were, you were really happy with your job. You enjoyed what you did. It made you feel productive and it paid. A great job all around. After time passed, you got really into your work zone. You barely noticed the hours go by. You checked the clock set high on a sidewall. With how late it was, it was time for your meal break. You breathed a sigh of relief and left your station. You found a quiet place to eat that was out of eye shot of most people and pulled out your phone. You typed out a text to Co to let him know you were having, di having dinner. You took your first bite of your meal and Co replied with an okay. Your phone came to life again as he let you know that he'd already taken his long break, but he still had a short one he could take. With him on break as well, he asked if he could call. You were happy for the chance to talk. You'd been wait wanting to spend some time with him. He was made aware of that and sent back one more text, a thumbs up. Then you got a call. You accepted it as soon as you saw it was Cove. Hey. Hi, Jamie. Hi. Today's been going really quickly. Definitely. Definitely. It felt like barely any time had passed since this morning. All in all, the week itself had been going by fast. Go black quietly. You should have seen it. When I got to my shift earlier, there was a huge fight going on with the schedule. I just tried to stay out of it. I'm lucky no one else wants to close it's not something I've gotten I've gotta defend. Some ships are way too competent competitive. He shook his head at the memory. He wondered how the ships had been sorted out in the end. He didn't bother to elaborate further on his workplace drama. I hope nothing's going on with you. This isn't normally when you'd be working. It's fine, I make sure to almost always have a good schedule. I was hoping to change the pace. I got stuck with a bad deal, but I had no choice. I'm getting through it. It's nothing. It's fine. I make sure to almost always have a good schedule. You figured that, co that like Cove, you probably didn't go for some of that especially desirable shifts. He made a small hum of acknowledgement. At least we're in the same boat. Yeah. Conversation drifted off as Coke grew quiet. I can't stay on too much longer. It's busy. You imagined he was looking at some kind of clock the same way you had earlier. Coke sighed. The two of you had only started to talk, and yet it was somehow over. Bye. Bye. The word was flat. He was down about leaving. There was a second of silence before he pulled himself together. We'll have more time later. Right, bye. You let him go and finish up your meal on your own. Just as you were clearing up, your phone vibrated. COVID found time to sneak you a quick text. Just a few more hours until closing. You smiled as you finished your break. It was time to get back to work. Customers continued to trickle in, even though it was getting closer to closing time. Before you could jump back into work, you heard your phone's quiet jingle in your pocket. It had to be a text message, but there was no way you could check it now. Your phone made another quiet noise, making your hand twitch. Wanted to check it. Still, it would have to wait. 
Shaking the distraction off, you quickly fell back into the rhythm of things. There was still plenty of tasks that had to be done. You were, you were filing some papers when you noticed movement out of the corner of your eye. Glancing up, you saw someone stopping at the counter. Excuse me, do you have any tissues back there? Yes, we do. I can go grab that in just a second. Turning back to what you were doing, you sorted at a faster pace. When you were almost done, there was a loud thump on the counter. Someone had unceremoniously dumped a stack of books, presumably expecting you to put them away. You tried to spot the culprit, but there wasn't anyone in sight other than the person from before. They must have not even stopped for a moment to see if you were available to take them. Ultimately, it didn't matter. The books did, and with a frown, you started collecting them all into your arms. When those were out of the way, the quiet sound of fingers tapping brought your attention back to the person waiting for you off the side. Your face warmed. The last few minutes pushed them completely out of your mind. They were in need of... Tissues. The box of tissues was in plain sight when you slid into the nearby back room. Seconds later, you were back at the counter with your finest customer service smile. You went over to where the library patron was waiting. I'm so sorry about the wait. You held the box of tissues out to them. Their gaze glanced down to the box. Thanks. They took a couple tissues and balled them up in their fist. Before you could ask if they needed anything else, they were already walking away. Soon enough, they disappeared between the shelves and you were already trying to push the whole event out of your mind. You were just glad that the interruption hadn't made you forget what you were doing. Your body was starting to tire out from the busy and busyness of today, luckily, you had one more short break. You took a seat and finally checked those messages from earlier. There was one from Mom. Would you mind stopping by the grocery store on your way home to pick up some asparagus and peppers for dinner tomorrow? Can't make it myself. Deadlines are tight right now. Thank you and have a great day. You sighed. You shook your head in frustration. You shrugged. You didn't mind the request. You were happy to do it. You didn't mind the request. It could have been a lot, lot worse. Asparagus and peppers. That was going to be a quick in and out. Easy peasy. You answered back. No problem. Can do. You weren't expecting her to text back anytime soon. Though you did already get a thanks for it. There was no reason at this point not to check the other messages you got earlier. A fond smile pressed across your face. And your heart fluttered in your chest when you read it. It was from Cove. Just a few more hours to closing, you can do it. You knew that Cove was supposed to be busy working too, and yet he still found a moment to sneak in a text. Not a bit of that surprised you. You smiled and shook your head, not planning on answering him. You messaged back, you're so gonna get fired. You messaged back, same. Cove responded briefly seconds later. You chuckled, wondering how this day was going in comparison to yours. You planned on sneakily sending him messages for the rest of your shift. You decided to leave the conversation there. Then you told him you could talk after your shift. Yeah. After that, you slipped your phone back into your pocket. Texting with Cove easily lifted your spirits tenfold, and you felt ready to tackle the rest of your shift. He was always there for you when you needed him, no matter what. The thought brought a warm smile to your face. For another minute, you stretched your arms high over your head and imagined how nice falling into bed later was going to be, you sighed. Hopefully your shift would go by in the blink of an eye. You jumped back into the rhythm of things. The last of the customers had finally exited the building. It was time to close. When all the doors were locked, you exhaled loudly. The, the whole place was officially closed. You were worn down. You felt relieved. You were pumped that you were done. Your mind was still stuck on the incident that happened earlier. That was okay, you thought. Not the worst you'd seen. You felt relieved. It was like you could finally reach the light at the end of the tunnel. There were too many moments where you seriously questioned if you would ever reach this moment. While you were shuffling around in the closed up shop, you had a call come in. It was Cove. You knew that he spent the majority of today working overtime. You hadn't been sure if you'd hear from him. You picked up his call immediately. Hey, just finished. You? 
Yeah. You wiped your brow, you yawned. I survived another day. I have successfully gotten that money. How are you doing? I have survived another day. The words came out in a quiet, mumbled huff, eliciting a small chuckle from Cove. Your body ached, but it was a satisfying one because you did successfully make it through another long day. Good to hear. Uh-huh. It was always worth relishing in the little victories you smiled to yourself. Are you heading home now? Actually, I have to run an errand for my mom. Where to? The grocery store. Mom texted me earlier asking if I'd pick up a couple things. Oh. Oh. Would you want to come too? It was late and you knew that Cove wanted to go home, but admittedly, you wanted company. He eased that concern by speaking softly. Sure. Yeah. I can go shopping with you. You walked, right? Mm-hmm. Want me to drive you? Yeah, that would make things a lot easier. No problem. It's nice of you to do this. Not really. Not really. I like spending time with you. Thanks. I like that too. Moments later, you had your things together and were ready to swing by the store. You were out the door within minutes. Cove pulled into one of the many free parking spots at the neighborhood 24-hour grocery store. Corridors were popped open and you got out at the same time. There was a salty smell in the air as the two of you strolled through the dim parking lot. The local burger joint on the other side of the pavement guaranteed the place always smelled like fries. Your eyes squinted at the change of lighting when you made it inside the building. The automatic doors shut behind you. With you truly having arrived, Cove raised his brow curiously. So? So, what are you, we here for again? Asparagus and peppers. It's for something my moms are making tomorrow. Sounds good. This will be a short trip. Uh-huh. You idly scanned the front room for a basket you could use if a full cart wasn't necessary. You felt responsible having your parents rely on you. You were already looking forward to tomorrow's dinner. It was overwhelming how much you had to take care of. You couldn't stand the thought of making it longer. That was all there was to it. It was a recent change that you wanted to fully embrace. You spotted the baskets and caught a glimpse of yourself while looking down to pick one up. You know, it feels funny to be in some other store while in a uniform from a different place. Cove snickered while sidling up beside you. Right? Right? It's like we're wearing a costume after Halloween is over. But I just hope no one thinks we work here. The uniform is totally different. But you never know. Yeah, people. Basket in hand, you ambled towards the vegetable section. It was set near the back, but visible right from the entrance. Cove matched your pace, keeping at your side. The asparagus was simple enough to select. You simply picked up a bundle that looked fresh. All that was left was the peppers. There was a wrinkle at the, in that plan. What color did they want? She didn't say. Then what are we gonna do? The color definitely matters. She left it out. That means I got get to make the call. I'll text mom real quick to ask. He nodded, satisfied with your solution. You tried to fish out your phone while balancing the basket. Cove held a hand out to take it. You accepted the help. With both hands free, you were able to type out a brief message to ask about paper colors. Then you start, stared, waiting at the screen. Cove hovered nearby to peek over your shoulder. The replying icon appeared, and you felt Cove lean in even closer. Just the regular green ones is what she was sent back. Alright, 
That's easy. And he was right. He picked up the requested green peppers, tossing a few into the basket. Produce acquired. All that was left was to go through the line, but as he approached the cash register, his coat stopped in his tracks. Oh, while we're here, I want to get something too. I need fruit for breakfast tomorrow. Uh, but what should I have? He glanced back unsurely at the section you just left. Whatever it is, you better hurry, because I'm getting in line. Cove, you had plenty of time for that before we were leaving. I can go back to look with you. I coaxed a small smile from Cove, his tension eased. Sorry. Thanks, Jamie. And sorry. It's fine. We can take a little more time to do this. Cove gratefully led you back to the fruit stands. He let his eyes wander across all the options, seriously considering his decision. Hmm. Not bothering to rush, you walked up and down the produce aisle for the second time that trip. Finally, something caught his attention. Transparent cases containing fresh blueberries, Cove grinned. That's it. It'll be perfect for tomorrow. Great. Despite the suddenness of how it happened, you were genuinely glad Co was able to get something nice for himself during the visit to the store. It made the trip even more worthwhile. Co carried his food himself, and the two of you went back to get a spot in line. After that, you completed separate orders for what you were getting. The produce was packed away into ba paper bags. There was one for you and one for Co. You both had what you needed in hand. The errand was finished. You walked across the length of the store to reach the doors closest to where you had parked. You and Cove stepped back into the night. Cove lightly swung his bag back and forth in his grip as he peered squinting into the dark parking lot. He smiled slightly, a gentle expression on his lips. Thanks for inviting me to the grocery store. You don't have to thank me for that. Thanks for keeping me company. company. Thank my mom for sending me out to do this. You're welcome. You quietly smile back. Thanks for keeping me company. You're welcome. We should do this again. After a moment of walking further into the parking lot, he sighed, sighed mildly. As nice as Cove was about this, he had to be tired after working a full shift. It's been a long day. Yeah. That very brief exchange really summed it up. Co shook his head to himself, the amusement replacing his worn down expression. <laughs> when did a busy day go from having way too many ways we wanted to play or having some extra homework to having to spend all day at a job and then running errands after? I don't know, when we became grown ups? I don't know, but it sucks. Hey, this is still better than high school. You didn't have an answer. Well, we became grown-ups. This is the true adult experience. Working, buying food, and then squeezing in human interaction while you're doing other productive stuff. Well, I guess kid me did always think older people spent their lives at their jobs. I was right all along. He laughed, and you had to agree. Hmm. Cove's eyes narrowed as his mouth opened slightly. He was having a thought. I think? Your moms need this stuff for tomorrow's dinner, not tonight, right? Uh-huh. And nothing's frozen, so you don't need to get it home urgently or anything. Would you want to go across the parking lot to that fast food place? We could get something. You know it's still open. Doesn't matter how late it is. It might be nice. You perked up at the suggestion. It sounded like fun. Alright, let's go for it. Let's drop the groceries off, then we can go. You agreed and Co strode over to the cars, buoyed at the thought of something to look forward to. He placed his bag in the back of his car and then let you store yours inside as well. With the groceries taken care of, it was a short walk to the burger joint. 
there were three cars lined up in the drive-thru, which wasn't too bad. You had to go all the way around the building to get into the front entrance, but you soon you were under another set of bright fluorescent lights. Luckily, there was no line inside the building, so you stepped right up to the counter. You glanced over the menu. This place had the common burger fare, nothing that set it apart from similar places. However, people must have liked it considering you'd seen it open for years. Hello! What would you like to order? Yes. Hello. I would like one of everything on your dessert menu. He burst out laughing. You gave him a are you serious look. Hey, you stole my order. Good idea. You kept a straight face. It didn't surprise you. Hey, you stole my order. He brushed a hand against the back of his head and his polite smile for the employee bent. It's something my mom does sometimes to be all spontaneous. I'm trying it out, too. Somehow, an act of planned spontaneity was incredibly Cove-like. After the cashier made sure Cove was being serious, it was your time to order. You got... Woo! A hamburger, a vegan veggie burger, a chicken sandwich, a spicy... Spicy chicken sandwich, french fries, definitely french fries. A salad. A milkshake. And a chocolate chip. And that was all. Cove gave you a little thumbs up. He wasn't the only one indulging. You wrapped up the order process, paid, got the number 264, then claimed a table. You sat down across from Cove in a booth where you had a good view of the front counter. It was nice to have the pick of the place. Thanks for doing this, Cove. I'm looking forward to this. I'm not worried you're gonna finish all of that. You didn't start any conversation. Thanks for doing this, Cove. Don't worry about it. I wanted to do it too. Then you took out your phone to text your moms about your delay home. You didn't want them to worry. Cove watched you before pulling out his phone as well, maybe for the same reason you did. When the updates were sent, it was back to being just you and your neighbor once more. He offered you a small smile. Mm -hmm. I've missed you, you know? Even if you weren't ever really gone, it's been less time than I am accustomed to. Cove tapped his fists on the table, definitely. He paired that action with a childish pout. If someone saw him like that, they might have assumed he was throwing a fit over not getting the toy that comes with a kid's meal. I felt the same way. I'm really glad we're doing this. We demand more time with each other. You're really cute. You are so spoiled. You chuckled at his mini tantrum. I feel the same way. I'm really glad we're doing this. He beamed at you sincerely, a ray of sunshine in this late night food trip. When the number was called, Cove hopped up from his seat before you could react. Don't worry about it. I've got it. Save our spot. Alright, see you. I'm helping get helping get that. You nodded your agreement. You shook your head no. Alright, see you. You stayed in the booth and got situated for the arrival of all the stuff. You checked over the table and moved your phone to the side to make sure there was a clear space. Cove returned with two trays in hand, a great bounty of food. He placed them down carefully, being extra cautious with the tray that held his milkshake. I'm back. And that's gonna be the last time I'm serving food to anyone today. He smirked and you snickered. It made a lot of sense. He was the one to get, he was a professional. 
Thank you for carrying all that, Cove. It's no problem. Aww. Cove didn't hesitate before digging in. He took a large bite of his cookie and immediately sipped his milkshake. Then he took a spoon and sampled his sundae with an approving hum. He made an attempt to follow that up with a bite of his apple pie as well, but bailed with a distressed look on his face. You tilted your head in a silent question. Uh. Hot! He switched back to the milkshake, taking a dedicated slurp. Go sighed at the cool relief it brought. You also started to taste yours. It really wasn't bad. It only a in only a minute, Cove's cookie was gone. You wouldn't be surprised if the milkshake wasn't far behind. He smiled as he enjoyed himself. He flickered his straw wrapper at him. He te teasingly offered to feed him his remaining treats. You scooped up some of his ice cream sundae on your finger and held it out to him encouragingly. He started choking on his little shake and cough. He sputtered ungracefully trying to explain himself. Sorry. I'm fine. I'm fine. He shuddered more, telling just how fine he was. When he finally stopped hacking, he took a deep, heavy breath. It's okay. What? You had no idea if he wanted the ice cream or if he was just saying things were okay in general. At your inquisitive look, he blushed and dropped his gaze to the floor. Um, it paused, then he looked back up to stare at your finger. The ice cream was starting to melt. A white drop splattered down to the table, but you wanted to give him a chance, so you didn't move. Cove gripped the table's edge and nodded. It's okay. This time you knew what he meant. He was serious. Cove cautiously leaned over and you felt tingly as he brought his mouth to your finger. He put his lips around your fingertip and you got goosebumps at the touch. He dragged his lips over to the tip until there was nothing left on it. Your face had to have risen several degrees. You would probably need something cold on your own after this. When he let go, Cove looked up at you. His own cheeks flushed. He had a trembling smile. Um. Was that good? He then abruptly smacked his hand on the tabletop and turned his head to the side. I mean, that was good. The Sunday. The Sunday was good. Thank you. You cackled, amazed at Ko's reaction. Oh my god. Oh my god. He robotically grabbed his milkshake and started drinking it, eyes anywhere but on you. <laughs> After a few large gulps, he started to calm down and gave you a shaky grin. <laughs> it helped settle you. <laughs> you felt so glad Cove agreed to come along with you on the initial grocery trip, and equally happy you accepted his invitation here. A little time off your feet, a little something to eat, you felt more energized than before. Your long shift at work that couldn't have been more than an hour or two in the past seemed like it was a lifetime away now. You continued to chat, mess around, laugh, and enjoy yourselves. For the first time that night, you felt like you weren't totally grown up after all. That was fun. Serendipity. Light filtered down through the leaves of an oak tree overhead, casting speckled shadows on the sidewalk all around you. There was a drop of sweat slowly making its way down the side of your face. You flicked it away with your thumb, slowing to a stop in the cool shade. The day had you out and about in town in no hurry to go anywhere in particular. Your morning shift had just ended and there was nothing else planned for the rest of the afternoon. 
Your moms were still at work themselves, and Liz had left early in the morning to do something. You had no idea what. You took out your phone, oddly noting the time when it started to jingle. The screen lit up in your hand. Speak the devil. Liz messaged you. Come home ASAP. Before you could even begin to question why, your phone went off again. Nothing bad, but you have to see this, so come back already. And with that final message, you were left only slightly less confused than you were before. You hadn't seen much of your sister lately. She had been acting strange for days, always shutting herself up in her room. Which wouldn't be so weird if at dinner, at the dinner table she didn't suddenly start smirking to herself over nothing. The rare times you did see her, she would sneak you expectant looks like she was waiting to be asked what was up, but all your questions led nowhere. She'd answer you with a put upon sigh, proclaim that she was busy, and tell you that she would have to talk about it later. No hands, no guessing, whatever it was, she was determined to keep it a secret. Maybe now you'd finally find out what it was. As you did, and about face on the sidewalk and started heading home, you received more texts. To your surprise, the name that popped up on the screen this time was Coves. Did you hear from Liz about some urgent thing you have to see? She messaged Cove too. You weren't surprised. Liz teased him about it, but he was like family. However, you were struggling to understand how he fit into Liz's surprise. Yeah, Liz sent me the same thing. What? Is there something on fire? Why would Liz tell you her news? Why would Liz tell you her news? Yeah, Liz sent me the same thing. His reply came only seconds later as you waited across the street. I figured she would. Are you going to see what's up? I'm walking there now. Me too. Glancing up, you saw that the light had changed to a walk sign while you were busy texting. You hurried, hurriedly wrapped things up, texting Cove a quick goodbye before crossing the street. It was fine. You'd be seeing him later anyway. Not expecting any more messages, you put your phone away so you could walk without having to worry about tripping over the curb. Thankfully, it was a short trek home, and soon enough, you were walking up your street, the familiar face of your house already in view. Thinking I might be waiting at home was making you worried, left you entirely lost. It felt exciting, left you entirely lost. And the more you learned, the more questions you had. They were all buzzing around in your head, too many to try to pick out and make sense of. Lost in your thoughts, you almost didn't see who was walking further up the street, Cove. Even from the back, the bright sea green color of his hair was unmistakable. You quickened your pace to catch up to him, the scuff of your shoes loud against the pavement. He heard it instantly, not missing a beat as he turned towards you and slowed his steps in sync. Hey. Hey, Jamie. Hi, here we are at my house. At that, Co gave you a wry smile. Here we are. It sounded almost like a question, wondering why the two of you had been summoned here there. Any ideas on what Liz wants us for? You shook your head. The situation was out of character for your sister. Anything could happen. Well, I guess we should go in and find out. Taking his cue, you grabbed your keys and opened up the front door. Cove trailed behind you as you entered. You walked through the open door and peered about, not sure what you were looking for. From the entryway, you could see Liz pacing across the living room floor. Living room. Her smiling gaze intent on her phone. You had caught her just as she had completed a turn behind you. The door clicked shut. The second she heard it, her head darted up to your direction, her features lighting up at the sight of you and Cove. Ah! You're, you've arrived! And together, too! That's perfect! Just perfect! 
She flashed you a radiant smile. You could almost see her limbs vibrating as if she was poised to pounce. Cove raised an eyebrow at your sister's bizarre behavior. What's going on? This better be important. You're in a good mood today. What is it? Where is it? What were you going to show us? You quietly waited to see what would what, what, what she would reveal. So what is it? Where is it? What were you going to show us? Liz laughed at your rapid fire questioning. Calm down. You will see. Liz's eyes narrowed with a mischievous glint as she let out a little cackle. So, lately, I've been hard at work on a little plan of mine, and you two get the honor of seeing it all come together. Here it is! Surprise! She lifted a hand in the air to present the very comfortable but completely mundane living room. In the resulting silence, you and Ko glanced around again and then made eye contact with each other. His face mirrored your bafflement. Then suddenly, another voice rang out in the room. Surprise! Surprise! Uh! Ko flinched at the shout, his shoulders shooting up to his ears. Laughter came from your sister, as well as from the other side of the room. Your head whipped around just in time to see a familiar figure with a freckled face and a purple cap springing up from behind the back of the couch. Ko's mouth flew up, fell open, recognition immediately coming to him. Shiloh! Hi, Cove! Hi, Jamie! Shiloh greeted the two of you so casually, like he'd be gone for ten days, rather than ten years. Shiloh! You were too stunned to speak. What in the world were you doing here? But I thought you weren't the Shiloh we knew. The initial shot quickly wore off. You crossed your arms and leveled a look at the freckle face who had ditched you at the start of summer. He treated you and Liz like complete strangers. Shiloh shifted nervously, angling the brim of his hat down as if to hide from the scrutiny. Liz tutted at your comment. Rude. Don't be rude. I'll explain. When we got home that day, I changed my mind about letting it go. Why did I have to? Social media exists, right? So I thought, why not try finding him and sending him a little reminder message? Luckily, there are only so many 17-year-old Shiloh Fields in the world, it wasn't that hard to do. Hearing Liz speak seemed to encourage Shiloh, who pulled himself together to face both you and your sister with a careful smile. Sorry. I'm really sorry about what happened. When you talked to me that first time, I was in the middle of a tour for a school field trip. I couldn't get separated from the group, and I didn't expect anyone to want to be talking to me. I was so worried about getting back to everyone else, I didn't think too hard on what you were saying. But when Lizzie's message showed up, everything suddenly hit me. Lizzie, Jamie, Co, you were the kids on of Sunset Burn, back when I was a little kid. There's no way I could forget that not for real. I do know all of you, and I'm so happy I get to see you again. I have Lizzie to thank for that. My mom was already planning to take a short trip near here this summer. Well, If my mom could bring me along, Lizzie offered to pick me up and bring me the rest of the way here just so I could visit the neighborhood again. And that's why I decided to make it a big reveal instead of outright telling you to. I got back in contact with Shiloh. Once again, she lifted a hand in the air, properly presenting that long lost childhood brand you all shared. So, ta-da. It was impressive how it all came together. All right, still pretty stupid of you not to realize sooner. 
You were glad they were able to see each other again. You were amused at their stunt. You were unsure what to feel about it. You were glad they were able to see each other again. You smiled softly at Liz, remembering how Shaw used to follow your sister around like a baby chick after his mom when they were kids. It's nice seeing the two of you together like this, just like old times. Cole blinked slowly, still a little dazed by everything that was going on. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm going to get some water. Don't disappear or anything. He padded off to the kitchen, no need for a chaperone. He knew where the cups were. Wow, you really surprised him. Lizzie and Jamie too. Did you see her face when I appeared? Yes, I did. Liz patted the cushioned front of the couch. Make yourself comfortable. You don't have to keep hunkering down behind there anymore. With a laugh, Shiloh crossed around backside and took the seat, but maybe it was awkward being the only one sitting because he kept idly twiddling his fingers. You could hear him humming to himself, a nonsense tune with no real melody, something to keep his voice busy. Being here again could be more nerve-wracking for him than he let on. Um, Kel's soft voice announced his return. He paused to drag the back of his hand across his mouth, wiping away what droplets of water lingered there. Hi, Shiloh. Welcome back. At Cope's confused greeting, Shiloh laughed cheerily. Thanks. I think it's amazing you're all still here in the same neighborhood. It's just like how it was way back then. With a giggle that implied differently, Liz nodded in your general direction. Mm -hmm. There have been some changes since then. You nailed your eyes at Liz. There was no way you could miss the teasing look she was fixing you and Cove with. Shadow's eyes shifted across the group, still smiling politely, but there was a still slight tilt to his eyebrows. He didn't know what to make of what she was saying. That is, until Cole cleared his throat and spoke. Jamie and I are dating. It was fascinating how red he got as he said it, but his voice was steady, confident. By now, most people knew you were going out. Shadow's eyes went as wide as saucers, mouth opening into a tiny O shape. Congratulations. Really? Congratulations! The two of you seem to like each other even when we were kids. It's really sweet that you're together. Cove... Cove's got himself a keeper. Yeah, it was pretty inevitable we'd end up together. I wouldn't want to be with anyone else. I won't want to be with anyone else. You didn't falter as you said it. There was no one like Cove, no one who could replace who he was to you, what you had gone through together. He gave you an adoring smile, and the, and the eyes that met yours were full of sincerity. He felt the same way. Shiloh sighed happily at the moment as Cove raised an eyebrow and gave the room a considering glance. Hey, this is where we met the first time, remember? Right, after I moved in, me and Jamie were brought down right here to have a play date with you. Shiloh laughed, his eyes downcast as he fiddled with the corner of his collared shirt. We met on the hill behind the house. What? The two of you ran away from the living room because Cove didn't want to meet me. You grimaced. Remembering how Cove had gone straight to the window to escape their arranged meeting. You had gone with him when Shiloh had arrived. Cove cringed at the memory of his younger self being pushed back to the forefront of his mind. His mouth going tight, he awkwardly looked away from Shiloh. You have a good memory. Oh? Oh, I don't think so. Seeing this place again just brings lots of things back. He clapped his hands together, an idea suddenly coming to him. 
But hey, now that our group is together, would you want to go out and visit some of the old places? I've been hiding in the living room since I got here. Liz wasn't afraid to laugh at herself, bringing a hand to her chest to silently take the blame for that. I'd love to. Yeah. Without missing a beat, the others turn to you for your answer. Definitely. Sounds like fun. And with that, the four of you headed out into the neighborhood as one. Even with how short the time you spent indoors was, the sun was momentarily blinding once you left the house. Squinting, you brought your hand up to shield your eyes. The pleasant summer day had yet to go away. Only a few wispy clouds drifted along in the sky. As you strolled down the way, Liz took the lead, followed by you and Cove walking side by side. Shiloh freely took the walking in the middle of the road, his arms idly swinging back and forth at his sides as he turned his head every which way to take in as much as he could. It was very much a trip down memory lane for him. You wondered how much the neighborhood had changed in his eyes. Not a word passed between the group about where you were headed, heading first, but soon enough you found yourselves walking the usual path to the shopping street. Before you reached it, the sounds of it did. A collective of sandals tracking the sand, the shrill calls of seagulls, the overlapping conversations of beachgoers, and random strains of music from various stalls. Wow! The odd gas had come from Shiloh. His eyes were all lit up. Were there always so many different stores in one place? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Wow, I can see why so many people come here. Hey, do they still have those nice little ice cream stands? Yeah, that hasn't changed. Yay, we should get some. It'll be my treat. Thanks, Shiloh. Ice cream sounds perfect on such a hot day. How about you, Cove? You could see that unlike Liz, Cove was struggling with the decision, brow wrinkled in thought. Finally, a hesitant smile appeared on his face as he settled on keeping to the spirit of the special occasion. Yeah, sounds good to me. Awesome! And Jamie? I'll buy one for me and one for you, Shadow. I don't want one, but I'll pay for yours, Shadow. I'd like that, thanks. Shadow gave you a wide grin as if you were the one buying him ice cream. The four of you continued to walk as ice cream plans were further discussed. Are you getting a popsicle, Lizzie? Yes. Hearing that, Shadow smiled shyly. I thought you might still like that. I'm gonna get an ice cream cone. Shadow began to turn towards Cove, but before he could ask, Cove offered up his choice. Mm. Okay. I'll get an ice cream sandwich. I'm gonna get... An ice cream cone. Shiloh had the right idea for this one. It was the best choice. There's an ice cream stall further up the street across from a souvenir shop displaying postcards of the seaside and saltwater taffy in its windows. The stand itself was already hard to miss with its pastel pinks and blues and its eye-catching poster card boards listing every individual flavor. It was impossible to ignore once the catchy little jingle playing from its speakers was added. Shiloh greeted the owner and began picking out the treats that everyone had chosen. He paid for them before handing them out to their respective owners. Sinking your teeth into your ice cream cone, you relished the sweet chill it left in your mouth. Liz was right. This was a perfect treat for summer day. Around you, everyone was eating at their own pace. 
Liz held her popsicle away from herself, careful not to let it drip onto her dress. She was trying to go about eating it as delicately as she could while Shadow dug into his. The, you counted only two or three bites before Ko had devoured his sandwich. Shadow laughed, also noticing the way Ko inhaled his food. It's already finished? Cove shrugged a little in reply, his attention more focused on crumpling up the sandwich wrapper in his hand. So, what have you been doing around here since I've been gone? Well, I already told you about me attending college away from here, so I don't really live here anymore. But to be more specific on my life, I'm pursuing a degree in architecture. Shallow perked up at that, his mouth falling open and all. Amazing! Thanks. Thanks. Actually, I was thinking about it, and the first time I really decided I liked buildings and building them was when you and I would make sandcastles out on the beach. Aww. Aww, Lizzie. At such a sincere admission from your sister, all Shallow could do was blush and lower his head too flattered to know what else to say. Liz laughed, dust just flustered though she had been the one to say it. The atmosphere was awkward, but not unpleasant. Shiloh shyly glanced over at you and Cove. Then what about you two? What have you been up to? Oh. Me and Jamie just graduated. High school, I mean. I've got a part-time job. I volunteered the organization that organization to clean up stuff. Things like that. You nodded along with Cove. You idly explain how you're doing normal things. That's a secret. You explained how you had a lot of plans. I'm mainly taking it easy right now. You nodded along with Cove. You felt there were two kinds of answers to these questions. A fine answer or an impressive answer, you didn't know which to give, so you were content to let Cove stand on his own. Shiloh just seemed happy to hear it. Great! Great! Being around him again was a little like picking up on an old forgotten habit, clunky at first, but as the four of you talked, it started to come more naturally. And when one of you ran out of things to say, suddenly someone else remembered something new. All right, do you remember those mean old, not actually grandparents that used to live in our neighborhood? Yeah, they were so mean. Well, they're not here anymore. Oh no. They're not spending summers here anymore. They're still alive. Thank goodness. It helped that Shiloh was just as eager to hear what had gone on in his absence as people were to tell him. Soon everyone threw out what trash they had in a nearby garbage can as your group made their way down to the beach, going down the shore and heavily led to a certain spot. It didn't take very long for Shiloh to recognize what was in the distance. His words trailed off in the middle of, of a sentence, his footsteps faltering at first. Then, all at once, he broke away from the group and dashed right into the old part, giggling as he ran. Oh, everything's so small! His laughter petered out as he came to a stop by the swings and grabbed hold of one of the support poles. He walked in a little circle around it, marveling at how easily his hand wrapped around its entirety. Emboldened by Shiloh's enthusiasm, Liz plopped herself down on one of the swing sets, only to instantly show an expression of regret. There was no way she was comfortable in that tiny seat so low to the ground, not with how she had to scrunch up her legs to fit there. Shiloh creeped up behind her. He took hold of the chains of her swing, one in each hand. Seriously? What are you doing? And with a grin, Shiloh started walking back. Liz shifted in her seat to look at him. You cannot be trying to push me. These are made for kids. It's never going to work. But Shiloh just hummed and kept pulling her back. Resigning herself to her fate, Liz tucked her legs up as much as possible as Shiloh moved his hands to her back. 
With a running start, he got her forward and up as far as he could go before jumping out of the way. <laughs> Liz had her eyes squeezed shut, a screech, a screech escaping her as the swing started falling backwards, and when it swung back around, there was Shiloh again to push her. She couldn't kick the ground like when you were kids. Her legs were too long for that now. But Shiloh was pushing her enough to keep the momentum going. The air was filled with their wild laughter and the almost rhythmic jangle of the swing chains. Ko sat against the bars of the jungle gym, wearing a bent smile as he watched them. He was fiddling with something, turning it over and over in his hands. When you craned your neck to get a better view, he obligingly lifted it for you to see. It was a piece of shell, one side rough and mold mottled gray, the other side completely smooth, revealing a faint blue sheen when it caught the light. I saw it on the beach. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good one. No, I meant Shiloh. He seems more confident than I remember. I think so too. You found it amazing to be playing with Shiloh at the park again. You thought it was crazy how much time had gone by. Why don't you push me on the swings like that? You left the conversation there. You thought it was crazy how much time had gone by. You found it amazing to be playing with Shiloh at the park again. I don't think I'll ever forget this. Ko nodded, leaning back to enjoy the breeze blowing in from the sea. So your sister began to speak out. All right, all right, I'm ready to get off now. How do you stop this? <laughs> Don't worry! Shiloh braced himself, one foot planted forward as the swing started coming back down. Then in one quick motion, he reached up and caught the chains again. The impact had his feet skidding back in the sand, but he kept his stance steady. If Liz was surprised at suddenly being brought to a halt, she didn't show it, only tilting her head up to smile at him. Shiloh had yet to catch his breath, though returned the smile just as brightly. He let go of the chains, walking around the swing set and briefly rubbing his hands together before offering one to Liz, which she graciously accepted, needing the help to get out of the tiny seat. Then the two of them made their way back over to you and Cove. Liz was looking more ruffled than usual, and her sun hat was off kilter, having held on for dear life for the entire ride. She took a moment to straighten her outfit back into one place. That looked fun. It was. Even though you were just pushing me on the swings? Yeah, that was the fun part. Huh. huh. Hey, Shiloh, you've got an idea of what our lives have been like since you've been gone. But I've been wondering what happened to you after you moved away. Shiloh's eyes went wide as if it was surprising to hear. You couldn't recall him talking about himself when you were all telling stories. But maybe he hadn't been able to find the right timing. He brought his hand to his chin, tapping it thoughtfully as he looked up and to the side. Well, what happened was my mom decided to move back to the south, closer to where I was born. We stayed there for a few years until she got another job offer in California again thanks to the connection she had there. It was a really good job at a private boarding school, so she decided to take it. With a wide grin, he said the next part. And as a bonus, her kid, me, gets to attend the school and live in the dorms for free. I've been there since my second year of middle school. Pretty soon, I'm gonna be starting my last year of high school. Liz leaned towards him with an attentive smile on her face. Have you been doing well there? Getting good grades? Got any friends? At the list of questions, Shiloh held his hands in front of himself as if they were physical things he should, he could stave off. Yeah. Yeah, to everything. It can be a little hard sometimes because of how people are in that school, but I'm happy. How are people? 
how people are. Cove couldn't guess what that meant, but Liz folded her arms, scowling. Hmm. Don't tell me there's peop more people like that Nate guy hanging around. Shiloh rubbed at his cheek, laughing nervously. He glanced from the bars of the jungle gym to the laces of his shoes to the trees swaying in the distance, unsure of where to rest his gaze. Not exactly. Nate doesn't mean to be mean. He just kind of is. He's the school's number one performer for athletics and academics. He always takes on so much responsibility that the only possible way he can finish it all is if absolutely nothing goes wrong. But that's impossible, so he's always stressed and ready to snap. He can't handle it when someone seems to be causing a problem. That's why during the field trip, he was upset when I went off on my own like that. Still, he's really smart and reliable and sensitive, and he cares a lot. Most of the time, he doesn't even realize his way of dealing with stuff upsets other people. Cove had a patient smile on his face, listening earnestly, and Shiloh rattled off his list of Nate's good traits. You know him pretty well. Are you actually friends? Well, not exactly. Me and Nate are in the same after-school group. About once a month, me and six other students and a supervisor get together to talk. We did it all of last year, and I think next year we're going to be in the same group again. I hope so. Nice, that's weird. Why would you want to be in the group with him? I'm glad Nate's not so bad after all. Despite Shiloh vouching for him, you still weren't convinced that Nate could be any sort of pleasant to be around. Liz vigorously nodded along with you in total agreement. Personally, I'd still appreciate having a word with Nate about his communication skills. Her tone of voice was low and pointed. You would be worried for Nate, if not for the playful smile that accompanied her words. Shiloh let out a little laugh at that. I do have Nate's number, but he wouldn't pick up. The people in my group only answer when they feel like hearing from me. So usually I have to wait for them to call. Either that or they'd never even consider answering my calls or calling me or taking talking to me at all. Unless the supervisor forces them to. It was such a bleak description of his dynamic with the, his group. But he didn't seem to realize it until he glanced up and saw the concerned looks on everyone's faces. His smile fell. He hastened to add one more thing. Well, except for one who'll always answer for sure. Oh? She really perked up. Really? So, that's a friend of yours? Uh. He hesitated to answer something Cove picked up on. Not exactly. Yeah, I'd like to be friends, though. All right. Liz crossed her arms together once more, grim face like she was the commander of a ship about to lead her little crew into battle. You should call them. Right now. What? If you want to be friends with them, I can help. If you're going to be in the same group again, then you should at least try to get along. No, I couldn't. He quickly grew frustrated, his tongue stumbling over his senses. I, I don't want to be a bother. I mean... Uh, Liz, what are we going to do? Watch him while he talks to someone on the phone? No, Cove. Shiloh. The last syllable of Shiloh's name trailing off into nothing. It soon became clear Liz had not fully thought out the plan yet, but she wouldn't be Liz if she just stopped there. Shiloh could put them on a video call 
and we could all talk together, of course. She clapped her hands together, a wide smile on her face that didn't leave room for dissenting opinions. Right. It's a good idea. It'll work. It's a great idea. Shiloh, get out your phone. I'm gonna save there, cause I gotta go eat. Thank you all for joining me. It's been great. Bye!